Hi guys, Miss Elise here, and we are back. I am so excited about this year and being able to work with the Harnett County Parks and Rec. So this week we're going to do some snowmen. I'm really excited about this because in our area we haven't had much snow, so I'm hoping that by us doing the snowmen, we can bring in some snow. Now I know those of you out there that are not a fan of snow, I'm sorry, but we're wishing for snow by making our snowmen. So before we start our snowmen, we're going to talk about a word, and it's called perspective. Perspective in art can mean several different things, but in this case, we're talking about the perspective of the snowman. And what that means is basically is how you view the snowman. So I am currently facing you, so the perspective that you have for me is from the front. Star. If I turn my head, you have a profile perspective, meaning you can see only half of my face. Like a lot of artists do what's kind of like a, a bird eyes view where they kind of like if you think of a drone, when the drone's up in the air and they look down, they're getting a bird's eye view. Like if a bird was flying in the air, they might things will look really small up in the air. Same. So this is actually a different type of perspective. This is a perspective of where the snowmen are actually bent down facing us instead of straight on or a bird's eye view above the sky. So to start this lesson, you need some color pencils, a pencil, an eraser, and I always like, I know you, we like to use the eraser on the end of our pencil, but sometimes when we need to make a big erase, we need to have a bigger eraser. You also need a Sharpie. Now, I have on my Sharpie a fat end and a skinny end. Now, so those are all the materials that we need. So I'm going to get my blank sheet of paper and let's get started. Okay, so... Our paper, and I'm currently using just a simple drawing paper that's eight and a half by 11, but it doesn't matter if you have a nine by 12 or something even larger, just means that you need to draw and use up your space um, as much as possible. So we need to pay attention to Miss Elise's positive and negative space. So what is positive and negative space? We've talked about this in class before. Positive space is the image that we are focusing on. So in this case, the snowmen are our positive space. But our negative space is the space around our snowmen. So the blue sky would be our negative space. So when Miss Elise is drawing, what I want you to pay attention to is not so much how big your snowmen are, but look at how much space you have between your snowmen. This is what you will be able to use if your paper is bigger than mine to know how big you need to make things, okay? I'm going to turn mine kind of like a diagonal. It'll almost look like a maybe elongated diamond so that I have the corner facing me right here. And I'm going to start right about here and I'm going to curve until I hit this other side like so. And I'm going to repeat that on all four of my corners. Keep in mind again about that negative space. So I drew this one. Now I'm coming over here to this corner and I want to make sure I have a little bit of space here so I may have to go longer this direction which is fine. So I'm just going to pay attention. I got a little bit of this negative space here and I'm going to curve and see, I'm still not quite sure where to end. So what you can do is instead of trying to draw it all in one swoop like we did that other one, if you're not sure where it should meet in the middle, come off to the side a little bit and go and meet it this way. Okay? And it's okay if some of your snowmen have are bigger than others. It get, makes it the art piece interesting. You don't have to have them all the same size. Okay, so now we're going to work on the head of our snowman. To do that, we're, I'm just going to come directly above, and I want to keep in mind that I don't want to get too crazy on the head because we need a little bit of space for their arms. So I'm going to, see that seems a little too high from here. 
and come a little bit lower and I start my curve like so. Now this, by starting your curve, helps you keep it very round. So now I'm gonna come where I want my head to show up and meet. So again, see how I'm not doing it in one swoop? I'm just kind of estimating where things should be and then I connect them. And there's my first snowman head. Now I'm gonna turn to my next corner. Do the same thing. There we go. And you're going to repeat that on all your others. Okay, so once you have all of your snowmen drawn out with your circles, now we're going to take our Sharpie and we're going to trace them. Okay, so once you've traced everything, you're going to want to grab that big eraser and let's get rid of our pencil marks. Okay, so now we're going to work on our hands. So I'm going to grab my pencil again. And we want our hands to come right about here. So you're going to start straight and then you want to go diagonal like so. Now you're going to create a parallel line, except when you get to the end, you want it to be kind of pointy so that you can add the extra little twigs for his fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and make my V here and then pay attention to the spacing. So again, I wouldn't just try to draw this in one swoop. Your spacing is going to get wonky. So try to stay parallel as best you can like so and then at the end you're going to draw your twig lines for his fingers then you're going to repeat this on the other side Okay, you're going to do this on all four of your snowmen. Okay, so once you have them all drawn, again, back to the Sharpie. Now again, I did this one with a fat end Sharpie. It works just as well. You just have to be careful. There's not a lot of spacing because your marker is fatter. So if you're doing this with the fatter Sharpie, take your time and really go over your pencil marks. I think this time I'm going to use my skinny end so that I get a little bit more space. So if you have a skinnier Sharpie to go over these, I suggest you do that as well. You'll be able to tell the difference in just a minute. Okay, so can you see the difference with using the skinny Sharpie? It looks a little more twig-like. But again, it's not going to make it any less beautiful if you end up if you only have a fat end sharpie. It's all good. Same thing. All right. From here, I recommend you yawing with your pencil and then going over it with the sharpie. However, since I've had many years of experience, I'm going to skip my pencil and go straight to my sharpie to start drawing in the faces of our snowman. So I've chosen several options for the faces. The first one I'm going to do is kind of like, I know it's January, but he looks a little santy. Let's just say he's disappointed. Christmas is over and he's still festive. We're going to continue the festivities. You don't have to do your snowman exactly the way I do it. You're an artist. Do it the way you want to do it. But I'll show you what I've done with mine. So I'm going to start with him first. I'm going to do a couple of circles. And then a circled nose. And then I'm going to switch to my fat Sharpie. Again, I did him completely with the fat Sharpie. Doesn't matter how you want to do it or what you tools you have. It all works the same. And I'm just going to make my smile like so. Now, I'm not going to color this in because, remember, we're using colored um, pencils. We're using colored pencils. So don't color anything in. All right, and then I'm going to make some rectangular buttons. 
remember buttons are all different types of shape. They don't always have to be circular. You could have diamond buttons. You could have octagon buttons, whatever you want kind of buttons, but I'm going to do rectangles. And because we're focusing on perspective, we've talked about this before. Things that are further away are smaller and things that are closer up are larger. So when you're doing your buttons on your snowman, remember small to big, small to big, because he's further away from you towards the top. That's why his belly, or the bottom half of his body, looks so much larger. Remember, we're focusing on the word perspective. And so I outlined it with my smaller Sharpie, but I'm going to put the holes with my fatter Sharpie. And with your fatter Sharpie, when you have to do details, it's all about pressure. So when I got to my smaller one, I didn't necessarily push it all the way down when I made my dot. Just a little tap is all you need with something that small. Okay, let's go to our next one. So I also liked to do a little hat and then I had some earmuffs, but you need to find where you've got space to do that. So as you can see right here, there's the hands are right there. So there's not a whole lot of space for me to do that hat necessarily right here. So I think I'm gonna do my earmuffs like so, okay? And then I'm going to do the nose, which is like a triangle. And I'm going to create some of those curvature lines because it's supposed to be a carrot. I don't know if you've ever done snowmen. We don't get a lot of snow in North Carolina. But if you've ever done a snowman, um, you use the carrot and for its nose. And then you can have a little bit of a smirk here. There's my smirk. Okay, so that just kind of gives you a difference here. This gets it a little fatter. This gets me a little more smaller with a little bit more detail. Both ways are beautiful, just different. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I know all my snowmen have a carrot nose, I'm gonna grab like a yellow orange, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and start coloring my noses. And then the rest of it is completely up to you. The only thing that you do wanna make sure to do is keep your snowmen white. They're made of snow, so snow is not gonna be the rainbow colors. So keep that in mind while you're coloring. So guys, keep this in mind because I have to remind my students all the time. You work so hard, y'all are fantastic about taking your taking your time drawing this out, but then when it comes to coloring, you fast color. And that takes away from the beautiful drawing that you've done. So slow down and stay inside those lines. Once you've done a beautiful job of coloring in the pieces of your snowman, now we're going to color in the twigs, which are their arms, which are brown. So before we start coloring the background, we need to add a little bit of snowflakes. So you're just going to do circles in the white area around the snowmen, like so, and doing this all over so that when you go to color with the blue, you're going to end up coloring around your snowflakes. Once your twigs are finished coloring, now we're going to work on the sky. Again, take your time. Keep those snowmen white. And then you should have a beautiful piece once you've filled in your background with blue and you've got your snowmen looking at a different perspective than straight on facing the snowmen. You've got them actually hovering over the viewer, which is us viewing the artwork. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye. Bye.